Right on in there. Now we're good to rock and roll, I think. I think being the key term there, actually. Okay, let's see. Let's just click it up a bit. That's not good there. There we go. That should be fine. Send. Post. Post. That's what we love to see. All right. Oh God, is that what my arms look like? All right, okay. Let me just adjust these lights so we can both see what I'm doing. And there we have it. Okay. All right, I have my plane, I have my camera, then all I need is my brushes and paints, because obviously that's an important thing that I need. Delicious. Okay. Where the fuck is my shit? Okay. Oh. Look at the styrofoam man here, I can just... I need to smear my brushes wherever I want. Okay, let's see. Alright, what colors do I need? I know! I need... The grossest brown to mankind. Because for some reason, that's what I decided to paint all of my orc shit with. You, this one bottle of Rhinox Hide, is going to be absolutely everything to me for the next three days. I have a lot of surface area. I have a lot of surface area. I need to paint a gross rusty brown. First off, I just need to get rid of all of the black on my brush at the moment. Because I tried to prime this with my spray primer as much as I could. Only problem was, the canister started to run out halfway through, which is always a problem. Because that meant I couldn't... That meant that half of the plane with like a, a nice, sleek, solid black, you know, the correct color that a base coat should be. And then the rest of it was just a uh, motley gray. So I had to go in and... Adjust that manually, as they say. Okay. Now, I've also kind of tinted this bottle of Lamia Medium with a tinge of black. Uh, which is a problem, but it's almost out. So not much of a problem in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so I'm thinking for this, I'm basically just going to cover the entire thing in a layer of brown to begin with. Like, I know I'm going to want a bit more, like, direct control over some of the areas. Like, I'm going to have yellow highlights and stuff like that that I built for, um, for some of my other orcs. But for the time being, I think I just need a nice, solid color. There we go, that's a bit chiller. Alright. I also never get to bring out the big brush. I'm, I'll always take any excuse to bring out a giant brush that I can just cover a whole lot of surface area with. <laughs> this the one with the flying headbutt ability? Technically, yes, it does have a melee weapon. Um... I mean, technically. I think rules as written. Um... Fl or like, uh, models with the air- I think it's the aircraft tag says that like they can only make melee attacks against other aircraft or like other vehicles that also have the aircraft tag. So unfortunately I'm not gonna get a lot of headbutting- I'm not gonna get a lot of headbutting mileage out of this one, I don't think. But what I will get is just a whole bunch of gun mileage, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Because, yeah, like I mentioned in I mentioned in the other video that I made uh, the other day, 
Like, there's, there's a couple of different variants of the Daka Jet you can build. Like, you can build it as bombers, you can build it as, um, you know, a regular gunship like it's supposed to be. Or you can build it as some weird, like, Starcraftian, like, force field laser jet, which I think is... Which I think is a good option, but just not one that I was going for. Um, so basically you can build it as a couple of bombers, or you can build it as the Daka Jet. I decided to build it as the Daka Jet proper, because you basically just get to fire a whole lot of machine guns onto, like, one guy in particular. Oh, the Daka, that's absolutely right. Which was the sort of vibe that I was going for, anyway. Like, I remember when I started, um... When I started formulating my plan for my orcs, um, I don't know why, but I wanted to go for, like, a bullet-centric army. Like, I wanted to just, you know, fire as many bullets as possible into as many, many individual guys as I could. I don't know, I felt like there was a lot of, there was, like, more strategic ways I could play the game then, you know? Like, I could be like, okay, I, 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 I can only really, you know, I have a lot of, like, single target options. Like, I'm firing a lot of bullets into things. I'm not creating explosions. I'm not creating, like, you know, fires across the battlefield or anything like that. I'm just, like, a constant stream of bullets from one end of the battlefield to the other. Is that a good idea? Who knows? Although I hear orcs aren't the best at shooting guns, so maybe I... Maybe I made a mistake there. Maybe. <laughs> hello, hello. I mean, don't give me too much credit on the painter's nails. Like, I'm, I'm pretty much out with, like, half of these already. I'm sort of in that stage where I'm, like, pretty much just applying new layers of paint um, over the... over what I've got at the moment. Like, I really should just, like, you know, use some nail polish remover, get rid of it, and just start again. At this point, at the very least. <laughs> I also got a couple of new colors that, um, I've, I've still been meaning to use. Like, I... My local chemist had, like, a, you know, buy one, get one, 50% off sort of deal, so I got, like, four of them. Male colours, that is, not 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 Citadel paint colours. Because those never go on sale, obviously. But yeah, I got like I, I pretty much got like a blue and a... I got a blue and a green nail polish. I don't know whether I was thinking of like my orcs and my ultramarines, but that's what I ended up getting. Although I tried to I tried to put the green one on uh, before I did my orc video actually. But it's a really clear green, so because I still had a whole bunch of like black left over on my nails, it was like, oh, that's not, that isn't, uh, that isn't showing up at all. Either that, or it just looks like I have a green fungal nail infection that I'm trying to hide with black nail polish. Needless to say, was not the look that I was going for. So yeah, if I want to use that green, I'm gonna have to like take everything off my nails and start again from scratch, which honestly might be a good excuse to do so. Because, uh, yeah, at this point I've just been, like, putting extra layers of black on chipped layers of more black. Maybe it's time for a change. Who's to say? <laughs> I'm a messy mini paint on the words. We're going to other colors. Yeah, I always try to... Listen, if, if I'm painting my nails, I'm not doing, like, I'm not doing a goddamn thing for the next couple of hours. I want to make a hundred percent. I want to. I want to make a hundred. I want to have one hundred percent clarity that the that the paint I put on my nails isn't going fucking anywhere. Because half the time it does, and that's that's a problem for me. Because my problem is I always paint my nails, and then like I start doing. I start doing just about anything like way earlier than I should. I'm like, oh yeah, it's been. I, I, I've, left, I've, I've left it to dry for five minutes. I can definitely, you know, go ride a bike or jump on this trampoline. 
I can't. Yeah, I've got twerp jamming out in the background. I love twerp. They're good. They're, they're good. They're good funky boys. I also feel like it's just good, like, background noise to have when I'm painting. Like, sometimes, especially when I'm, like, trying to stream and talk and do that sort of stuff as well. If I get, if I get too focused on the lyrics of, like, you know, more vocal songs, I can, I, I get, tend to get a little bit tongue-tied. But, uh, you know, if I just have some funky beats in the background, it's all good. It's all chill. I'm really trying to keep the layers thin on this first coat. Um, hold on, I can probably like put this light a little bit more over here. Lighting's always hard when I start to do uh, painting like this, because it's like, oh, I've got a solid black 3D object that I'm trying to splat colors on, and it's it gets messy real quick. Are you got vinyls? Hell yeah! That must sound great, actually. Like, I've never had vinyls or anything like that, but I've always liked the idea of just, like, um, what do you call it? I've always, I've always been a fan of the idea of, like, you know, listening to music as, like, an active hobby, you know what I mean? Like, if you just throw on, you know, something on Spotify on your wireless earbuds or something like that, like, that's fine. That's background noise. You go out of the way to load up that record onto a, load up that vinyl onto a record player, you know, drop the needle. Like, that's your afternoon, baby. That's what we call active listening. I don't think that's what we call active listening. I think that's something else. But, my point still stands. <laughs> it's a totally different vibe. Hell yeah. It's like, I'm going to listen to music, and that's going to be my afternoon. I'm going to crack a cold one, and I'm going to vibe. Vibe to music, vibrate in place, whichever, whatever. It's your choice. I mean, normally when I'm just, like, painting on my own, like... I've been getting real into the, uh, the audiobooks of the Black Library, so... That's... That's definitely been, like, a good go-to for me. Which I, feel is, which I feel is ironic, because I've never been that big of a reader. But no, I've, just got, I've discovered audiobooks in the last, like, six months, and it's absolutely changed the game for me. It's like a podcast that was purposefully written to begin with. I'm sure those podcasts actually exist. Like, all the podcasts I listen to are just like, you know, a couple of dudes in their living room fucking talking shit. <laughs> Consider getting an airbrush. You know, I'm always, like, on the lookout for, you know, things I could do. Um, and, like, no... Um... New painting technology or techniques that I can employ, but um, I don't know. Like, a, like an airbrush to me, like I don't, I don't think, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm ready for the commitment yet. You know, obviously an airbrush would um, definitely help here. Honestly, just like a spray bottle of um, Rhinox Hide would probably help me out here. But you know, I like to go through with my little pots of paint my little brushes, and uh, slowly chip away at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know, like, I feel as though... Hmm. 
Airbrushing to me sort of sits in that same... It sort of occupies the same space in my mind of, um... It sort of occupies the same space in my mind as, like... Uh, what do you call it? Like, explosion effects on 3D models. Like, you know how you can get those, you know, 3D printed, like, you know, muzzle flares and tank blast and explosions that you could put on uh, models and things like that to make them look like they're actively shooting a gun. Um, to me, those kinds of things are like, I get it. I enjoy it. Like, I think it looks good. But, like, it's just not for me. You know what I mean? And of course, maybe I'm just saying that because I've never used one before and I haven't learned the... I haven't learned how cool they are. But at the same time, it's like... I don't know, I, I, like, I like using the brushes. I like, you know, dry brushing things. I also just have no space for it. Like, right now, I'm, uh... You know, I'm, 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 I'm... I'm I'm on my, like, one desk that I use for all of my computer stuff and my job and everything like that. Like, I don't really have anywhere to spray. Like, I, I, I spray Prime, so I use, like, the, you know, the, ca the cans of priming spray and everything like that. But in terms of, like, actual airbrushing, I, 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 I don't have the real estate for that. Because... Like, if I do it at my desk, I'm just gonna make a huge mess, I'm gonna spray the walls behind me, you know? And you might say, oh no, if you control it, it's actually really easy. I know myself. I know that if you put anything that sprays paint in my hands, I'm gonna get it fucking everywhere. But at least with spray priming, you don't need to, like, uh, you don't need to, like, aim it, necessarily. Like, you know the whole thing is gonna be painted black, so you paint the whole thing black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was actually pretty terrified of airbrush myself, but Amazon was like, okay. <laughs> I am actually in Canada right now, so USD is actually a fairly a fairly close comparison, I would say. <laughs> Let me dip my toes into the airbrush well. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm definitely not against it. I'm just like, for me in my space, in my painting career, I'm, I'm still using the brushes. And like, sure, it'll it'll save a bunch of time. But I, I, but I like the brushes. I'm content, I would say. The Inquisition is watching. The Inquisition is always watching. That's a lie. The Inquisition has a whole bunch of fucking blind spots. If the books RTB believes. I say, having only read one book that contains the Inquisition. And it's the Orc ones. Because of course it is. I think I'm still trying to figure out how to get the most out of this big brush. Because, like, a lot of it's still, like, really rigid. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to, like, you know, leave it in the water for a little bit to, like, make the, br make the bristles softer. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm just, like, slapping an entire base color code on this anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I just want to keep it as even as possible. And I know right now it looks pretty slap choppy. No, that's a that's a different word for things. Trust me, I made an absolute mess of it my first time. Oh yeah, like that's because one of the things to me is that painting is so final. Like you put the, you put the you put the paints down and then you can't really like take them off. You know what I mean? Um. And so it's like, I feel, I feel like if I had an airbrush, and I, I I feel like that would get out of hand, like, real quickly. Like, my biggest, my biggest personal flaw when it comes to, like, art and painting and the stuff that I make is that I'm always like, okay, I'll just put a little more on, 
I'll just put a little more on, I'll just put a little more paint, I'll just put a little more detail, I'll just put a little more of these things, and I've gone over the top. Uh-oh. <laughs> like, I always overdo it, like, I always think, you know, just a bit more, just a bit more, just a bit more, just a bit more, and then if I get, if, I, I know full well that if I had an airbrush, I would just, it would just be spray priming, 2.0, because I'm like, sprays. That wasn't a coherent sentence, but in my in my brain, I knew what I was saying. Okay, I'm actually. I think I'm gonna use another brush for this. You can't take them off, but you can always paint over it. That is true, and I've done that plenty of times with uh, a lot of things. But there's only only so much like overpainting you can do. Like I think with my um. Uh, Space Marine Apothecary. I'm gonna put that for scale. Um, I think I need to, like, I think I've... He was, like, one of the first major models that I did, and I basically painted his face over... over and over again, like, four different times. And... I'm probably looking too closely into it, but from, from what I'm seeing, it looks like he lost a lot of detail. Like... His face is just kind of a blob of skin tone now. He's also gone through, like, three separate skin tones, I feel like. Like, he was completely albino white, uh, to begin with. And then he got really tan. And then he sort of evened out with the third coat. <laughs> That's always... And that was, like, my first time painting skin. Which I probably should have done on, like, a smaller scale marine. I shouldn't have, like dived into it on, you know, one of my major units that I got from the Leviathan box. But I did. And I stand by my decision. Uh, what chapter do I play? I am so sorry to be the bearer, to be the bearer of bad news. The Blue Boys. <laughs> I mean, I say that, but I haven't actually, like, played it the game yet. Like, I literally just started painting Ultramarines because they were the colors in the, um... They were the colors in the starter set. So when I got the... Uh... When I got the, um... When I got the Leviathan box, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna keep painting them blue because I have blue paints. And, like, I don't have an option, really. Uh... But then my partner got me, like, the... The full... Citadel paint starter set uh, for my birthday last year. So now I have pretty much every basic character under the sun. Um, and now I can paint any color that I want. So... But I'm still going to go with Ultramarines. Because I like them. I like the color blue. I like the classics. I like their big stupid U's that they have on their shoulder plates. You know, I enjoy them. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the blueberries? Hell yeah. So many people. So many people are like, Ooh, Ultramarines are detected. Opinion rejected. Shut up. There's a reason that they're the Marines of the starter set, and that's because they're easy to paint well. The Craig Blue is a nice color, and I'm tired of pretending it's anything but. <laughs> That's why I play Dark Angels? Ooh, hell yeah. I gotta say, the Dark Angels kind of grew on me. Like, I read, um... Like, after I finished the Dark Angels uh, Horus Heresy book... I was like, you know what, I'm not too keen on these guys. Like, I get them. Like, I understand them. I pick up what they're putting down. But, you know, would I play them? Uh, probably not. But then they had all the really cool, like, models and stuff that they released recently. And I'm like, hmm, you know what? Maybe. Maybe, maybe I kind of get it now. I'm, I'm starting to see the appeal. <laughs> Get out of here. 
Have a wonderful evening. What day? I don't know what time it is at all. They're very different from 30 to 40k, though. Yeah, I, 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 I hear that's the case. I mean, I'm mostly just talking about the overall, like, theming of, like, medieval. Um. Like, like, medieval dudes. Like, that was one thing that, like, I wasn't super interested when I started getting into 40k. Was, like, you know what? I know it's sort of got... I know it's sort of, like, quasi-medieval fantasy. Well, not medieval fantasy, but, like, a little bit more, tr like, it's, it's like, quasi-traditional fantasy, quasi-space, and I'm more interested in the space stuff, you know? So, things like, so things like the Dark Angels, even things like the, the Space Wolves and things like that, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm more into the, I'm more into the cool guns and the robots and things like that. Which is sort of why I went with the Ultramarines, because they sort of straddle a fine line between things. But, you know, as time went on, I started opening up my mind, my eyes, and I was like, hey, this slaps. <laughs> Into Bedakinus. Okay. I'm getting some really, like, splotchy coverage covering... I'm getting some really like splotchiness in my base coat here. Like some of like some of the some of the colors coming off smooth. Some of it's coming off uh, less smooth. Also, I'm just gonna move my lights over here because like I realize I'm I realize I'm blocking it half the time. Oh, that's absolutely not what I want. See, you see, a professional would have all this stuff figured out before you know they decide to go live. But me. I work on the fly, baby. I work well under pressure. That's a lie. I don't. Actually, oh, and now I've completely moved my camera. Oh, good God. <laughs> Hello, fellow Ethan. Oh, God, what's happening? I really... All right, I fucked this up. I fucked this up! But you know what? I can fix it. Is that good? Is that fine? Is that... <laughs> See, I'm making these... I'm making these... I'm making these... I'm making these lighting changes, and I have to wait, like, seven seconds for it to be reflected uh, on my monitor. Like, I can't check how it looks on my phone, because that's not gonna be... Oh, God. It's... I'm literally watching myself make bad choices in real time. Uh, which is pretty much what I do in real life. So... Oh my god. <gasps> I'm trying my best. Two thin coats. I don't know how many thin coats I should do. I just keep... I just keep slapping stuff down and... Hoping it sticks. Like, that's... I don't know what I'm doing. And at this point, I am too afraid to ask. But it seems to have worked out so far. Alright, settle down. You can't see it. You can't see it because it's, like, slightly off-camera, but I have, like, four cups that are very perilously, uh, that, that are put, that are placed very perilously close together. Like, I have my paint water cup, you know, where I, where I have my water to wash my brushes off. I have my coffee cup, which is full of that good, good bean juice that I need to remain a functional member of society. Um, and I also have a cup of ginger ale. And I also have a cup of fresh frozen blueberries 
um, that I snack on for antioxidants and power. So basically, every time I go to uh, wash my paintbrush off, and so I can, you know, get a bit get a bit more liquid and um, get a bit of a get a bit more paint on there, I basically run the risk of dumping a brush full of Citadel paints. I, I basically run the risk of dumping my brush that's full of the Citadel paint Rhinox hide into my delicious cup of ginger ale, or the coffee that I need to remain a functional member of society, or my cup of frozen blueberries, which I need to live. I, rec I recently committed the unforgivable sin of uh, putting a brush in a, in, a, in a cup of coffee instead of the paint water brush, instead of the paint water cup. And uh, I cried. It was it was it was a beautiful moment because it spoke to my growth as an artist and as a creator, and it also ruined the fresh cup of coffee that I made. So that was very sad. Do you think I could get a de away with a de putting a Dax Jade into my uh, Age of Sigma army? I don't know enough about Age of Sigma to confirm or deny that. There might be a way. Anytime I, anytime I meant, anytime I like try to talk about some Age of Sigma or I like try to make a joke or something like that, people are like, oh no, that's real. It's like, oh, you know, it's, 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 it's medieval times. I'd love it if there was a, you know, there was, if, if there was a group of people who were just like fucking, you know, rowdy townsfolk. Oh no, that's real. That's like Cities of Sigma or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Warp shenanigans send them to a portal through Age of Sigma. Hell yes. He just like give it the stats of like I don't know a, a, a dragon or something. Do they have dragons in Age of Sigma? I've I've got no idea what's happening in that game. Apparently rats are back, and everyone's really excited about that. Because the rats basically like blew up the world or something. Last time I was at the Warhammer store, some they, I, I was like talking to some of the guys about Age of Sigma, and it's like, oh yeah, there was fucking, you know, Marvel Avengers level events just happening left and right, and now there's rats. I thought the rats were like a joke. I didn't think they were real. The rats are back. <laughs> And just go do the classic spilling of the non oil. I've done that. Uh, I have spilled non oil. Worse than that, however, uh, the pot that I spilled specifically was non oil gloss, which is a discontinued variant shade paint that you physically cannot buy anymore. So it was even it was even worse. I didn't spill all of it though. So that would <laughs> see. This is the stuff that I'm. This is the stuff that I'm still learning about, like Warhammer. Like, I'm, I'm still learning a lot about Warhammer, like, as I go. Um, but I think I think it's beautiful that I can be like, oh yeah, the rats are back. And everyone can just say, rats, rats, rats. <laughs> like, every time I mention something in 40k, like, everyone crawls out of the woodwork to be like, you know, to just have some kind of moment, and I think that's beautiful. Like one of the last times I was I was in the Warhammer store, I was like debating about buying things, and I saw they had a they had a model of Gazgul Thraka uh, in the like leaving soon section because like it was like the last chance to buy it or it was going to be like pulled from the shelves or something, and uh, I was like hmm I don't know like should I buy it like you know I I've been looking to buy something and I just got like paid so I was sort of looking to treat myself and like very slowly. Uh, everybody who was present in the store at the time, uh, just started going, Gaz, go! Gaz, go! Gaz, go! Gaz, go! Gaz, go! And, uh, you know, like, no spoilers, but, uh, long story short, he's a part of the family now, so. Still need to build him, but. Let's see if that shows up on camera. Yeah, okay, it works. <laughs> I, I am the giant big scape and that makes all the rules. I understood that reference. 
I understood that German 985 reference. Fun fact, Gaskell wrote his name by Mar from Margaret Thatcher. <sighs> Again, you can just say anything about Warhammer and I have no choice but to believe you. Like, at this point, I feel like people are making fun of me. But then it's like, no, that's real. Okay, why is my phone buzzing? Okay. Oop. Well, that's real out of focus now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm gl I'm glad everybody I'm glad everybody heard me get a slack message uh, on the weekend of all things. Don't be messaging work on the weekends. Nah, it's fine. I think someone's just one of my co-workers just came back from holiday or something, so he was like, Hey guys, I'm back. Anything on fire? Talk to you all tomorrow. Makes you feel a bit better, I know zero about Warhammer. I feel like you can still enjoy it under those pretense pretenses. I feel like Warhammer is one of those things where like you can you can you can enjoy it on a very surface level. Um, but then you can also dive deeper and you know get real into the deep, crunchy lore if you want to. And that, like, elevates it in a new way. Like, one thing I want to do, which I've actually been thinking about, um... Top of my set's behind. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm not messaging Slack on a Sunday. I simply won't. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, because like I I finished uh, Warhammer Forty Thousand Space Marine shortly before my flight to Canada last year, um, and I, and at that point I was like just getting into Warhammer, so I was like looking at the so I was like, you know, slowly learning about the Space Marines and everything like that. But I kind of wanna I kind of wanna get I kind of wanna play it again, uh, just so I can. You know, just so I, just so I can really like you know appreciate any like deeper lore that I might know now. Because you know they make some throwaway lines to like the Mechanicus. You know they talk about the Machine God at some point there. Um, and like I did not understand the ending of Warhammer Forty Thousand Space Marine. Um, but I, I kind of get it now in hindsight. Um, but. You know, I've been thinking about going back and replaying it again. Hello, everyone! Okay, is that is that okay if I, like, put the wing up like that? Um, you can't really see underneath it, can you? You can sort of see that it's getting to be, like, a very rusted brown now. I also realize that, you know, I'm pretty much just going through and painting this all one color, which... You know, probably not, not, not the most interesting thing to watch, but that's where the yapping comes in. I yap, you see. Might start painting some of my dudes, even though I'm Yeah, do it up. I find that, like, every now and again, it's like... It's, it's always good to just, like, dive into, um... Dive into it. Like even if even if you just put down some base colors for a bit, even if you just put down like a little bit of colors for a little bit, it's all good progress. And that's one of the things I like about painting is that like no matter what, you always feel like you're making some kind of progress. And that's and that's and that's really conducive to me, because like sometimes I feel sometimes I don't feel like doing anything, or it's like oh, I can't start a new task now, you know. Like, I can't start something that I'm not going to finish for a while, because I don't want to, like, devote all that time to it. But if you just instead look at it, like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna put, like, one shade of blue down for, like, 20 minutes, and then I'm going to go do something else. Like, that's really easy for my brain to come to terms with. Like, if I, if I think about it like that, i am be like, okay, I'm not going to be here for, an for hours on end. I'm just going to slap some, like, base colors down, 
and I can come back to it any time that I want. And that is how my brain works. Because if I can't finish something in one sitting, it can be sometimes be very difficult to do the thing at all. Is that a symptom of some kind of invisible ADHD? Probably, but I'm too afraid to ask about it. And I shan't reflect on it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Watching Zach had to play Space Wing was the first real introduction to 40k. Something like that was kind of was kind of my thing too. Like I played Space Marine before I like really knew what Warhammer was, and like. For me, I was like, eh, it's, it seems okay, I guess. But I, like, I think that game has a lot of, like, you know, lore and stuff that you don't really appreciate. Or, like, well, I, th I, th I think I think it's one of those, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's kind of a catch-22. Like, I think Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine is, like, it's a 6 out of 10 game. Like, it's okay. Like, it's basically just the same combat loop again and again and again and again. Which, like, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, it's a fun loop, but it is very repetitive. Um, so it's so it's like a six out of ten game. But if you're interested in Warhammer and like the lore and like the world and the stories and everything, that immediately elevates it to like you know a seven. Because like the gameplay loop is fun, um, but you're also like you know getting to walk around that world and like talk to characters in that world and uncover mysteries in that world you know, from the perspective of the titular spaced marine. Which I think is really interesting. Like, not a lot of other, like, game franchises, like, have the potential to do that. Um, because it's, because it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's very all or nothing. Like, like, I think the, um, you know, I, I, I think about, like, the Avengers game that, like, was just listed as okay. Um, like, I don't think, like, I, I think that's one of those games that's like, whether you know a lot or a little about the subject matter, like, sure, you'll get some Easter eggs, but it doesn't really, like, dramatically change the experience. I feel like Warhammer is a much more of a fluid world that, like, having that understanding really elevates it in places. Fun fact, there was once a loyalist dreadnought by the Empress Children called... I have heard about Rylanor. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Good for Rylanor. Every now and again. Oh, that explains a meme that I saw. I remember seeing a really crunchy image a while ago that was like, I, th I think, I think it was a, sp I think it was a, I think it was a dreadnought, and I was wondering why he was pink, and the caption was something along the lines of like, "That's a good argument." However, virus bomb. <laughs> See, the more, see, like, it's, like, that, that image is funny on its own. If you know the context, even more funny. That, I think, sums up 40k to me. Like, on the surface, it, like, it works. Like, it can just be, like, cool space battles. But if you look deeper, it starts to work more. I also realize I'm painting the underside of the wing, which you cannot see on camera. Which is a problem. Okay. I need to think of what I'm doing here now. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, virus bomb upon you. <laughs> I am also a Loyalist Emperor's Children guy. Well, like, not really, because I haven't, like, I had a... Like, I haven't made any progress towards it, but I got a box of Chaos Space Marines uh, for my birthday last year. Flippin', 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 flippin'. Uh, a flip. But yeah, I got, a, I got a box of Chaos Space Marines last year, and after reading the uh, Horus Heresy uh, Fulgrim novel, I was like, yo, the Empress Children are 
fascinating. Like, I really, like, I think I'm like eight books into the Horus Heresy so far, and throughout all of them, like, Fulgrim's book was def as, is definitely like my standout favorite at the moment. Because, like, I think that had the most, like, interesting character dynamics outside of, like, the first three, which, you know, stand on their own as being really, really, really good. But, like, I think the idea of Fulgrim, like, as a character, I think, I think he fits so much within the world and is, like, so... He's such a fascinating character study. Because, like, to have... You know, to have a guy whose, like, very existence is to be... Is to like embody the the aspect of the human aspect of perfection is like a doomed race from the start and like he can't see that nobody around him can see that and like it is eventually his downfall because he falls to the power of you know if he falls to the power of chaos because he's like fucking man's man's just got gifted kid burnout syndrome he's like yeah i'm i'm the very best oh wait to be human is to be imperfect? I'm just yapping about Fulgrim now. <laughs> Even in... <laughs> What's that one quote that comes? Ugh. I hear you do strange things to your men. Yeah, he fucking, like, rips out their throats and, like, puts fucking sonic amplifiers in there. Makes some noise, Marines, baby. But yeah, I, th I think my favorite part of that Fulgrim novel that I always think about was, um, when Fulgrim got, he, like, he, he brought one of the human, like, Remembrancer artists into... Like he, he brought a he brought a he brought a human artist into his chambers to like, you know, critique his uh, statues that he made like chiseled out of stone, and they were the best. They were like super good statues. They like perfectly resembled their subject matter. And Fulgrim was like, "Please give me your honest opinion." And the, you know, the artist was like, "Well." It's, it's not art. It, like, perfectly resembles it, its subject matter. There's no, like, thought or there's no, like, personality or soul behind it. It, it is a... The sculptures you have made are a one-to-one -one recreation of uh, the things that you are intending to design. And then there's like, a, there's, like, a whole bunch of, like, you know, character writing and, you know, thought process and stuff like that. Where he, and then he eventually realizes that he's like, oh, shit... He wasn't actually asking me for my opinion, he was just looking for validation that his work was great. And I and, and at that moment I was like, yo, Fulgrim sucks, but like, as a character, I love him. Like, to just be wrapped in like, such personal vanity, whilst also being like, you know, also being told from the very get-go, you are a superhuman that is meant to embody one of the core aspects of humanity. Ah. Books. Anyways, Fulgrim is hot. Yeah, that's probably the most important thing, I bet. <laughs> Character dynamics be damned, right? <laughs> He's got that flouncy long hair that everyone loves so much. <laughs> I, also, I, also, I also do appreciate that he is like, you know, he is, he is very vain and cares a lot about, you know, beauty and looks and things like that. While everyone around him is like fucking Chadley McGunman. <laughs> Everyone around him looks looks like it could be a grizzled uh, first-person shooter protagonist from 2008. I do skincare. What's your superpower? I beat people over the head with a hammer. Oh. Okay, I think 
think I need to... Alright. Speaking of Pepper Primark, Sanguinius Novels. Okay. Okay. That's really interesting, because, like, I... One of, the, one of the interesting things that I've found so far in, in the books that I've read... Um, and I'm sure, and I'm sure there's just, like, other books that go deeper into this that I just haven't read yet. But, like, everybody talks a lot about Sanguinius, but I very rarely heard Sanguinius speak. Like, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole part in, like, the third Horus Heresy book where Horus is like, Ugh, it should have been Sanguinius up here. Everybody loves Sanguinius so much. Like, he would have done a way better job than I, that I'm doing. And, like, everybody talks very highly of Sanguinius about being this, you know, charming, charismatic, you know, like, beautiful-looking Primarch. Oh. But I also think it's interesting that, like, up until that point in the Horus Heresy books, like, no, like, you, you never really hear, uh, you never really hear, um, Sanguinius speak on his own. It's, it's almost like the world around him, the world around him is sort of, like, building up Sanguinius is like this mythical character that almost defies existence. Like, everybody loves Sanguinius, but, you know, do you ever hear what he's about? Do you ever hear him speak? No. It's like how everybody loves Beyonce, but Beyonce hasn't done, like, a proper press interview in, like, a million billion years, because she doesn't need to. Because she's Beyonce. Sanguinius is all the hot. I think we get, I think we have, I think, I think, I think we're starting to see a theme here. There's a pattern I'm noticing. YouTube user at Stygian, I'm starting to notice a, a a predictable pattern in the favorability of Primarchs. And you know what? I think that's beautiful. They can't be a twig, they're all- they're all fucking ten feet tall and built like a brick shithouse. It doesn't work like that. That's not what twink means. Words have weight, they have meaning. Lest we abuse that meaning and render it meaningless. <laughs> no! No dreams, only truth. And the truth here is war. <laughs> if any Primark is a twin, it'll be out there. It's like, yes, that's... Isn't that the point? It's two of him. Alpharius is another one of those uh, figures who, you know, is always like, I don't want to say clouded in mystery because that's kind of the, you know, the whole, the whole point of the Alpha Legion. But like, I, I, I hear, like, even, even reading the Alpha Legion, um, Horus Heresy novel, it feels, it definitely feels as though, you know, they are almost like the authors of their own mystique. Like everyone's like, ooh, the Alpha Legion is so mysterious. But then also half the book, the Alpha Legion is literally saying, like, yes, we are so mysterious. It almost reads to me as like, hmm, how do I, how do I describe it? It's almost, it's, it almost seems to be, it, it almost seems like how Rick from Rick and Morty is quote unquote the smartest man in the universe. But he's the smartest man in the universe in the context of the Rick and Morty television show. Like, the Alpha Legion is the the sneakiest space marines in, in in the galaxy, but also they're you know they're not they're not really I don't, I don't I almost don't feel like they're written to be sneaky. It feels like they're written to just be right all the time. At least in, at least in the one Horus Heresy book that I've read, like in the in the Alpha Legion Horus Heresy novel, like I feel like. Any time somebody tried to, like, escape the Alpha Legion or to pull one over on Alpharius, they were literally like, Yes, this was our plan all along. You fell right into my trap. 
Like, did did they fall right into your trap? Or did they just do something and then the book was written in such a way that it was like, yes, of course. Like, any time the Alpha Legion came out and was like, hey, we, you know, all, we, this, this is all according to plan. Like, there was no preamble for it. There was no, like, foreshadowing. It was like, oh, we do this. Alpha Legion comes out and says, hmm, I was 12 step I was 12 steps ahead of you this entire time. And I'm like, that's... <sighs> You're running 12 steps ahead because you were written that way. Like, I as the reader couldn't see the logic leading into this. I don't know. I don't know. Although apparently I hear, like, in the other... Um... In the in the in the in the other in in other like Horus Heresy books or like other 40k books, the Alpha Legion I kind of joked about in in in, in that kind of way, which which I think would be very validating for me, because they're like, yes, the Alpha Legion, we are the sneakiest and the smartest of all Space Marines, and then the other Space Marine chapters are like, hey, yeah, we we know your plans, like we're also smart as well, like we straight up know there's two of you, like you can stop lying about that. And then to say two inches is a little bit shorter than the others, but like a f <laughs> Okay, maybe in the context of Primarchs. <laughs> you couldn't smash Dawn. But um, Tish. Some of the Primarchs only, like, exist as vague abstract concepts in my head. Like... Rogal Dawn is just a name to me. Like, I know he's a guy. But I haven't, like, encountered him in any of the Horus Heresy books yet, I don't think. So anytime someone says Rogal Dawn, I'm like, oh yeah, the weirdly named Tank, right? It doesn't help that all the fucking Imperial Guard named their tanks after the Primarchs. It gets very confusing. Can you imagine they make a they make a miniature of Rogal Dawn and you go up to the counter at Games Workshop and be like, ah yes, one Rogal Dawn, please, and you walk away with a battle tank from the Militarum. I think I should do that as an April Fool's joke just to make people mad. I would find it hilarious. <laughs> Rogal Dawn builds Lego, that's basically it. Everybody who plays Warhammer basically builds Lego. It's just it's just a different formulation of the plastic. There's something very soothing about like uh painting like broad surface area with a big brush. Like I'm just slowly making progress. I'm slowly chipping away at it. I'm slowly, you know, putting water on my brush and doing everything like that. Even though it's one color. Arguably the most boring paint color known to man. I feel like I'm making progress. And I think that's good. <laughs> he's out of line, but he's right. <laughs> Emotional support centurion. I will say though, I will say though, reading the Fulgrim novel and getting to the point where I realized that where they they sort of make it known that who was it? Fulgrim and Ferris Manus are like brothers. Um and you know, Fulgrim's like, you know, tall, slender, and beautiful, and Ferris Manus is like squat, burly, and you know, a little bit fucked up. From that point on, I couldn't not see them as Wario and Waluigi. Like I even thought about drawing it at one point, just because it was so just because the image was so funny to me. But I don't know if that'd be funny outside of my target audience of just me. Oh yes, they are brothers, which makes it all the more... All the more tragic that they're on different sides of... All the more, all the more tragic that they're on different sides of the conflict. I think. Okay. Uh, oh, oh no! This paint's way too thick. I need to, I need to thin this bad boy down.
<laughs> I wonder what the Primarch of the Iron Hands is named. Dropside Massacre? I think, I think, I, I think, I, I think that's been covered already. Or maybe, I, maybe I've heard about it on like Adeptus Ridiculous or something. No, I, I'm, I'm thinking of Istvan 5. That's, that's the battle I'm thinking of. <laughs> Yo, we did it! We defeated the robots! Hell yeah! I do play Helldivers. It's very rare that I that I buy and play a full-priced game that's in the zeitgeist right now, but I decided to treat myself with Helldivers, and I am having a good time with it. It barely runs on my Steam Deck, but it runs just enough, and that's okay with me. I've been playing it very casually, though, like... Uh, you know, just jumping in every now and again to, you know, fight some bugs, shoot some bots. <laughs> well, that's good for us. You know, I'm glad I could contribute to the Galactic War uh, while painting on a YouTube stream and not actively helping. But I can at least take credit for it. <laughs> I get like 30 frames and I've logged like fucking 500 hours. Hell yes. That's dedication. Oh my god. My light's annoying me. Is this is this better? I'm like fucking with my light setup like halfway through this, like on the fly, which I know isn't. Which I know probably isn't like best practice, but you know I, I'm not best practice. I'm just doing whatever I think is fun. And I'm right, objectively. Okay, I'm also like fully like off the center of the camera. My ship has just slowly started like shifting down on my weird bed of styrofoam that I've got it on. <laughs> you are helping propaganda counts. That's right, I'm out here telling people to join the Helldivers. I, I did think it would be interesting to uh, pick up a box of Imperial Guard and paint them like Helldivers, but somebody beat me to it. Like, that's, that's a kit bash that somebody's already done, and I think that's beautiful for them. Hey, look, all I'm saying is that if I make a, a million dollars on... If I make a million dollars on YouTube.org, I will just buy weird Warhammer kits and paint them weird ways. Like, if I, if I, if I get money, money dollars for doing this, that's, that's, that's what my... That's what my career will end up being. And I'm fine with that, honestly. <laughs> That being said, though, I did actually, like, literally just this morning, uh, cross the threshold for, like, the basic variant of monetization. So not, like, you know, video monetization and, like, watch ads and things like that, but the, like, you know, fucking super chats and, um, what do you call it? Like, the YouTube subscriptions and things like that. Stuff which I'm probably not going to use, but, you know, it's all progress in the right direction. I'm... yeah. It just makes me happy that, you know, people are enjoying the weird little videos that I make. And I like showing my weird little... weird little comedy stylings to the world.
<laughs> Get out of here. Have a good night. Hmm, what are some good colors? Colors for an armager. I don't know what that is, I realize. So I agree, you should paint it pink. Whatever it is. Because I don't know what it is. And I can't make an informed decision, so I'm just gonna go with the weird sounding answer. Because honestly, that's been my, that's been my, uh, that's been my main tactic in life, and it's got me this far. And I am fine with that. <laughs> I found a channel a few weeks ago from your old backstory video. Yeah, those things! Those things did really well. Like, if they were, um... If they were included in, like... You know, the... Monetization watch hours that you need, like, I would've... Like, my channel would be monetized already. Like... It was crazy, they just sort of popped up out of nowhere. I mean, they did pretty well on other... Platforms, too. So... Like, I suppose it wasn't too surprising. Um, no, that's, that, that's a lie. I always, I, always, I always think it's very special when, you know, people enjoy the silly little videos that I make, and the silly little jokes that I tell. It just tells me that people like weird little Warhammer content, apparently. Which is good, because I like making it. Um. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! We'd love to hear that. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell myself, I'm gonna tell you that I'm proud of you, but I need to move this for a little bit. So that means I need to put the brush in my mouth while I do that. So that just means I sound weird for a little bit. But I'm proud of you for doing that. So... That's a good, that's a good job on you. Yeah. Oh god, that brush tastes disgusting. I'd move my face into the camera and tell you that you're doing a good job, but I've also been eating frozen blueberries all day, so I probably look like I have jaundice. I love eating just cupfuls of frozen blueberries at a time, uh, but the, the weird little fruits do dye your skin in a way that makes you look like you're suffocating. <laughs> that guy. Oh god, so true. So true. That's weird, you know? You have gamers from across the gamer spectrum, and I've... Got paint on my laptop. But that's fine. I can rub it off. <laughs> Which three? I'm worried now. <laughs> Two out of four so far. Just racking them up. Like Pokemon. That's how it's pronounced, right, fellow kids? Yeah. I'm gonna be so happy when these, like, base colors are done. Uh, so I don't have to paint something like fucking rust brown for a while. Like, I really enjoy my little color scheme that I've, that I've got for my orcs, like the... Like the rustic brown and the... Avalon Sunset Yellow sort of highlights and everything. Like, I like how it is, but then I just have to go through the, the heart, like, the, the boring process of painting everything a really drab, rusty color. Which barely even shows on the camera half the time, anyway. But that's fine. I'm trying to get all the achievements. Just 100%ing life out here. We out here grinding for these chibis. Oh god, yeah, I 
in my water there. I think, it's, I think, I think the lights are like adding extra heat. So it's almost like drying my model for me as I'm painting it. I'm literally like painting, I'm literally like painting inside of a microwave right now. I probably shouldn't put my pot of paint like so close to the lights though. Like that's definitely, that's definitely uh, not what I need to do. Well, I'm glad that's the demographic that Warhammer has because like, I don't know, I've been, th I've been thinking of more ways to do like more fashion content on YouTube and everything. Like, that to me hasn't translated into into a, into long form videos, um, very much necessarily. Like I know I did that video a while back um, about the about the first time makeup tips, um, which I'm still very happy with. Um, but outside of that, you know, I don't have any major major ideas for like long form makeup videos or anything like that. I did, I did have one idea, actually, that, um, that I might do, that I might not do, who knows. Um, I sort of had a concept of, like, riffing on those, like, true crime YouTubers, um, who do their makeup while they, you know, talk about horrific murders that actually happened in real life. Um, uh, except, in, except instead of, except instead of true crime, uh, I talk about, you know, Warhammer lore while doing a set of makeup. But, like, framing it in the same way that those true crime videos are also framed. Like, hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the biggest massacre on East Van 5. And I'm also using this Fenty brush set. Although I'm not sure if that's, like, a subgenre of, like, YouTube video, or whether it's, like, one person doing that. If it's just one person doing that, I don't want to make fun of, like, one person. Because I think that's mean. But regardless. What does I need? Oh god. Oh god, my like, head keeps my head keeps like ducking in and out of the camera every now and again. You gotta watch out for that. I don't know much about the demon cab but I know that it's gross and weird. It probably doesn't age well. Okay. That tutorial is just me sticking my head in a bucket of fake blood. And screaming. Arr! Drowns, but also makes some YouTube ad revenue at the same time. It all works out. need to pivot the jet this way for a little bit because I just need to just need to get like under the need to get right in the nose here there's a lot of weird bits underneath like on like the underside of the jet that I really need to get into that's that's, that's one of my only criticisms with the orc models they have a lot of nooks and or crannies that are really hard to get into like, I remember when I was painting my boys, um, I, I got to a point where I literally had to, like, go and paint underneath all 20 of their chins. Uh, just because, like, I forgot about that on all of them. And I was like, oh, that's actually really visible if you hold the model a certain way. And that annoys me. Make a tutorial reading the Archon of Flesh's work. Is that like a book that makes you go insane if you read it? <laughs> hey, sounds like you just like to paint. That's called having hobbies and interests. And I think that's really healthy. Yeah, 
I'm just sort of, I'm just sort of vibing out here while I slap on the base coats. Because the base coats are sometimes really boring to do. So I like to have a yap while I do it. I also realize I'm doing that thing again where I'm like painting on one of the wings that the camera is actively not looking at. <laughs> he doesn't know. No, I've never heard of the Archon of Flesh before. I can only assume that's some kind of messed up tidbit of lore. So far, my, so far my exposure to 40k lore has been sporadic at best, and also just all over the place in general. Like, there's like a 50-50 chance that if you try and like say some random tidbit of lore, I'll be like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. Or like, oh god, I kicked my stand again. It's like a 50-50 chance to be like, oh yeah, I've heard of that, or like, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean the cities of Sigma are built on an entire, like, microcosm society of rat people? And they blew up the world? Huh? Can you use mini paint to paint your nails? Ah, uh, that is a good question. I probably wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I think some nail paint is, like, acrylic in general, but, like, I don't know, like, anything that's, like, like, I, I, I would very much defer to the uh, opinions <laughs> of experts and dermatologists on that one, because, like, paint that is intended for your body is oftentimes significantly different than paint that is intended to go on little plastic miniatures that have been, you know, developed and... 3D printed in the United Kingdom. And then sent on a really big boat over to wherever it is that you live. <laughs> Does he know about the Glebus Glorp? Alright, now you're making fun of me. And I accept my place as somebody on the internet that that is going to happen. I am but a humble clown. Jingling and jangling in my court of fools. My flesh eater court of fools. Huh? Huh? Sigma? I've never played the game. I almost picked up the uh, Age of the, the new Age of Sigma game that came out because I just saw like Warhammer in the title and my brain blacked out for a second. Uh, but one. The the game does not run on the Steam Deck, apparently, which is the gaming, the PC gaming tool of choice for me. Um, and also it's an RTS, and I don't like RTSs. And also apparently the game was bad, which is disappointing, I suppose. I know a lot of people were looking forward to that one. But I do not know enough about... Uh, Age of Sigma, or the real-time strategy genre, to know about any of that. Which is a shame. My brain simply cannot comprehend games that run in real time. I am a fool and an idiot, and I need to pause everything every 20 seconds. <laughs> Bro doesn't even know who Sly Marbo is. That's a, tr that's a trick! I know that one! I know that's a man who exists because Sly Marbo is an incredible name, and I am chuffed every time I hear it. I know, I know he's real because his name doesn't sound real. Right, I think I'm slowly getting to a point where I need to, like, flip this model over again and start tackling the other side while the bottom of this dries. Okay. I'm trying to get, like... I'm sort of attacking at this at weird angles because I'm, like, moving it around for painting on stream and everything. i just got to remember to go back and do everything. Boing, God be praised. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, I'm very chuffed at the fact that the that Sly Marvo is basically just Chuck Norris, but in the Warhammer 40k universe. It's very silly. But then again, so is the game. Why am I holding?
holding my brush like this? Why why is this why is this the way my brain tried to tackle this problem? I do like Slime Mabo. He puts all his little traps around the battlefield. He's a trapper. He's a little Rambo. <laughs> Oh, my phone buzzed. Why did it buzz? I wish my phone didn't buzz while I was using it to live stream. Then again, I should probably use actual proper technology rather than just like putting my phone on a tripod and hoping for the best. But you know what? Streaming equipment is expensive. And I am just a little guy. <laughs> Hey, real talk, we need to bring... We need to bring Chuck Norris jokes back. Like, they were... They were a good part of the culture. Like, who is the modern-day Chuck Norris? Is it just that guy from the... Is it just the guy who plays Reacher? Or whoever that, like, fucking... Amazon military man show is? It is? Yeah, that was the one thing. That I, that I tend to see. Like, when I was sort of sitting down and going, like, hmm, what army am I going to play? Like, what am I going to do? Like, I originally wanted to play Guard because, like, my favorite thing in fantasy is to just have, like, a bunch of regular dudes running around. So, like, I, 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 think, I, think, I think it would be very funny to be playing, like, a big old space battle game and to have my army be just, like, the regular dude, the regular Joes with fucking... Standard issue laser guns. Facing off against a fucking zombie robot horde or some shit. But then I saw that their models aren't good. And also you need to buy a million of them. But you know what? Someday. But also not today. Also a lot of the a lot of the, a lot of the Imperial Guard models are like really small as well. Which like, which, like, makes sense. Like, you stand up next to a space marine, and it's like, okay, space marines are actually huge when you think about it. So you've got to have that baseline. But, like, as someone who's, like, just starting out, I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I don't want to buy the really, really, really small models, all of whom have skin and faces. Which is also really hard to draw. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. Hell yeah, please do. Because, like... <laughs> also, isn't it true that, like, they, um... Like, Gazans basically just have dudes and tanks. Like, I don't think there's too much, like... Well, I guess that's also kind of their appeal, you know? I don't know. One day I'll play a guard army, and I'll paint them all, like, gold or something like that. Make it cool. In the meantime, gotta finish my orcs, gotta finish my space marines. I have painted a single Tyranid, so I should probably paint the rest of them because I spent money on the Leviathan box set and haven't re haven't nearly done fucking anything with them. Jesus. Hold on, I gotta find him. Where is he? Where's my one Tyranid that I have rolling around? Where is he? Where's my one painted Tyranid that I have on my desk somewhere? This is definitely not me stalling for time and waiting for my paint to dry. Absolutely not under no circumstances. Yeah, there he is. I love him. <laughs> All of them have faces, not if you keep ash. Well, I suppose that's true. They can also not have faces if you sand them off. Which, you know what, I just might do. I'm very happy with this little guy. Like, when I got the Leviathan box set, I was like, you know what, okay, I'm gonna start by painting the basic Ultramarines, the basic way. Um, and then when I came to the Tyranids, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna choose a custom color. I'm gonna choose a custom color for that. And so I did. Guards take less time than space marines to paint. Is that a fact? 
Oh, blow me down. Ow. Okay, um, I'm gonna... I think... Hold on, is that gonna... No, that's probably fine. I think the parts that I think the parts of the model's leaning on is probably dry enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like the Skitari. They're funny little guys. Hey, what's poppin'? If it weren't for the amount of gaunts, I probably would have chosen this. Yeah, they're um. The Neurogaunts are really fucking small. Like, they... You're telling me I gotta paint 20 of those things? 20 of these little guys? Get out of here. Back off. <laughs> Clearly I still need to paint them because he's only got like two coats on him. <laughs> so how many bombs am I putting on this? Uh, this one is just gonna be... <laughs> well, currently, like, what you see is what you get for the Dakajet right now, because, like, I wanted, I wanted this, I wanted this guy to just shoot as many bullets as possible. Um. So, yeah, he was, uh, this Dakajet is just gonna, is, it, it, as the name implies, it is pretty Daka-centric. <laughs> But I do love the fact that I just have a whole bunch of bombs that I can use for other things now. Whew, okay. Material needs players, so I know the pain of the little mutated sea monkeys. Yeah, they're so small. Why are you so small? Why are you tiny? Yeah. I need, I need to toggle my pot, hold on. Toggled. Toggling complete. I'm basing thinking the AOS orcs is a serious lack of DACA. Oh, I mean, at that point, why would you even bother, you know? No DACA? No thank you, I say. <laughs> No, thank you. I mean, I feel like the Age of Sigma orcs, you know, they're, they're a different fantasy. Like, they're a little less comedy, and they're, they're, they, they seem to be a little more, like, Lord of the Ringsian. Which is, you know, pretty obvious given the medieval theming of the setting and whatnot. But, you know... That's someone something. Somebody wants... Somebody out there in the world deeply loathes that orcs are the, like, you know, comedic punching bag of the Warhammer 40k universe, and instead are just like, no, I want them to be, like, gritty, mean, like, fucking medieval killing machines. And Age of Sigma has them covered. Although I will say, in, uh, what is it, like, Old World... They still look goofy. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how they feel about that one. <laughs> have you read Brutal Cunning? I have not read Brutal Cunning. I just uh, the other week I did, however, just finish reading. Uh, what is it? What was it? It was uh, Prophet of the Wa, the Gazkul novel. That's the first orc book that I've read. And I very much enjoyed it. It was very interesting to seeing a 40k book from like an orc point of view, which I think is which I think is the running like, you know, um, summary of the book in most people's heads. Like, yeah, it's it's really interesting how, you know, you sort of get the space mar you sort of get the Imperium view of like how they see orcs, and then you also get to see. Um, how the orcs view the Imperium, but also how the orcs view themselves, which is interesting in its own right. It's a good book. 
I also really liked how it how it like bounced around between narrators. Like sometimes it was written from an imperial point of view. Sometimes it was written from an orc point of view. Sometimes it was written from a space wolf point of view. And when I was reading the audiobook version of the book, like they had different narrators for each one. So it was almost like a radio play at times. Because like it would switch between, you know, the really British orc narrator to the really fine and proper Imperium narrator. And then they had the Space Wolf chapter where they had the Space Wolf reading minds while also being naked and doing a ancient Space Wolf ritual, which was very important for him to have his penis out during. That's real. That's not a bit, by the way. I'm gonna pick it up. I still have like a couple of like audible credits. Um, which is how I, you know, tend to read audiobooks these days. But yeah, ever since ever since I read um Gaskol Thraka, Prophet of the Wa, like Audible's been trying to recommend me Brutal Cunning. So you know what, give it time. It'll happen. I find most problems can be solved with judicious application of a Laz Cannon. God, so true, bestie. Yes, Mac. Would highly recommend the Night Lords trilogy. See, funnily enough, I am actually, I think I am reading the first book of the Night Lords trilogy. What is it, like, Soul Drinker or something? Like, I, I, I haven't been, like, um... I'm not like too like I, I don't I don't have any strong feelings towards the Night Lords like positive or negative, like I haven't really heard that much about them. I think they're like edge lords for the sake of being edge lords is the way that I I've I've heard them described, and you know what well, good for them, like it's always good to have that, you know, in there for those who want it. Um, but yeah, I'm reading the first book in the Night Lords trilogy because they had like a special going on an Audible. Where it was like, hey, get two books for one credit, but only the first books in series is, so you can get hooked to the series and then buy more books. And so like, okay, I see what you're doing. So I bought, yeah, the first night, the first book of the Night Lords trilogy, and I'm like, okay, I'll maybe read this when I run out of Horus Heresy or like, uh, orc books to read. Um, and I started reading it, and it's actually pretty good. All right, not gonna lie, not going to lie. The guy who reads it has a thick Russian accent, or like he gives the Night Lords thick Russian accents, and I think that's beautiful characterization. We are the Night Lords. In Midnight Clad. The guy who reads it is also like a phenomenal narrator, like... Literally like the quality of narration in uh, Warhammer audiobooks is like very much determined on whether I think they're good books or not. Does that make me basic? Probably. But you know what? Fuck you. I am what I am. Some Night Lords are honorable? Hell yeah. It's about the flavor of the Night Lords, I think. Like, they got that edgy flavor. Which is someone something. Horus Rising audiobook? Hell yeah. I mean, I got started on the Hor Horus Heresy books, just because, like, I hear that... Because, like, I, he I heard they were good, or something like that, or, like, that's, you know... Because of, like, the prequel and everything. I think I think it's interesting, because, like, it, it's... I feel like a lot of the lore of, of 40k is, like, you just have to know, right? Like, you just have to know it. Um... So I feel like, you know, the Horus Heresy being a a popular series as it is, I think that's I think it's really interesting. Because it's 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 not really like the prequel to like a specific thing. It's almost like the prequel for the world that 40k is. 
which I think is a really interesting dynamic. You can, it's, it's like pretty much detailing everyone's fall from grace before the galaxy plunges into the, like, the eternal war that 40k is. And then, like, the writers, like, definitely, you can, you can tell that the writers are asking themselves, like, okay, we have a setting that is literally, like, everything is war. Like, there is no good everything is just bleak and bullets and, like, conflicts raging. Like, how do we create a world in which that is the status quo and that is, like, the necessity, almost? And, like, props to them. Like, they, 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 they do a good job. Like, I want to keep reading this so I can get to the end of, um, you know, like, the end of the death and, like, actually finish the series. Because, like, the fact that they have a last book in the series now is actually, like, holy shit. You actually get to read how Horus fights the Emperor. It's not just exposition for, like, 20 billion books and then it all just dissipates. Oh. I made the mistake of going straight from a Clive Barker book to Fulgrim with severely let down. Oh no! I have seen that there is like some standalone Fulgrim books, which I am like, I'm kind of nervous to read them because like I really liked the Horus Heresy book on Fulgrim, which was like the fifth or sixth uh, book in the series. Um, and I really enjoyed that, and so I'm thinking that, like, the standalone Fulgrim book would, you know, sort of take away from the legacy a little bit. Because, like, I don't know, I feel like the Horus Heresy book on Fulgrim, you know, the one that is aptly titled Fulgrim, was a really interesting, like, like look on the character, and you could very much, you very much saw his, like, arc go have its, like, complete rotation, of like, yes, I'm the best, I'm perfect in every way, to, oh no, there's evil in the Imperium, and I could potentially be a part of it, to, I am so lost, I'm just going to give myself to chaos, sort of thing. So I feel like if you tried to do a book before that, it would just be Fulgrim being an asshole for 500 pages. Because, like... Because, like, that, that's all it would be. Like, it, you would only be able to do the book before his character development. And before his character development, he wasn't a cool guy. Night Lord's basically just Drukari with some redeeming qualities. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's good. I, you know... I feel like everybody has uh, a weird view on the Dukari and just like Slanesh in general. And like, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's very dated the way that people sort of look at the Dukari and, you know, Slanesh and everything like that. Like, I feel like it's very reminiscent of like, you know, that sort of time in the 2000s where it's like, yeah, they're, they're, they're sex and horny. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, let's, let's, come on. Come on. Spoiler alert, Batman dies. No! Wait, how's that a spoiler? Wait, hold, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Isn't that quote, like, spoiler alert, Dumbledore dies? What? what? <laughs> well, like, it, it, it references a character that, like, very famously dies. I feel like I've like actually got spoiled for something, and then just ha and just my my brain is just not letting me comprehend what it is. <laughs> yes, I, f I, f I feel like I need to like block the word slanesh from my Instagram comments because like that's. <laughs> I know that nerds are just weird. I just feel I just feel like it's dated, you know. <laughs> Grandmother no 
cool. More like gross mother Nurgle. Ayo! Fuck is made of flies. Wait, no, that's somebody else, never mind. Wait, is Nurgle made of flies? No, he's he's just gross in general. That being said, I do That being said, I have thought about buying some Death Guard models. You know, just just for fun. Just for fun, you know? I feel like they have a lot of surface area that'd be fun to paint. They're really big and chunky. <laughs> Aw, good for Slanesh. We stand a monarch, truly. <laughs> Try telling that to the gamers. <laughs> I think you know, I, I have I have seen the Great Clean one. I've heard I've I've heard I've heard them like you know talked about in like whispers and rumblings throughout the web. Uh, but I don't think I ever like laid my eyes upon one until very recently, and it's delightful. I love them. <laughs> oh, we got another one, lads. That's right. I have hobbies and interests outside of just one thing. I would highly recommend it. <laughs> We've got another one. That's that's my favorite. I think I posted on my Instagram story like a couple days ago, so it's not gone now. So it's so it's gone now. So like I, I just got like a string of comments ac across a couple of my ins of my YouTube shorts of like some of my more like makeup and fashion oriented ones, and it was literally like it was literally just like you could you could you could see you could see the character development. It was like it was like what is this? This is not orcs. Okay, maybe this is acceptable. Do orcs next. <laughs> I've got to post that to, like, threads or Twitter or something, just because, like, it was, it was very funny. Like, somebody, like, straight up having a, you know, not a, not a, not a, not a gay awakening, but whatever you call it. They were like, hey, this is wrong. Oh, wait, maybe it's kind of chill. No. Ow, 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 ow. Or conspired maker, maybe. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking about it, but I, I, I feel like the only way to faithfully do that is literally to just like put green face paint across all of my face, <sighs> throw on some like prosthetic jaws and everything. I mean, I'm not saying no. All I'm saying is that that would be expensive, probably. would be expensive, probably. But hey, if enough people like and subscribe, I can make money up. No. I mean, I should be able to do, like... I've hit the threshold where I can do, like, channel subscriptions now, but I don't think I'm gonna do anything with that. I mean, like, I've tried to do, like, Patreon and stuff in the past, but that's always been, like... That's that's always been a losing battle for me, cause cause I'm like you know, I do this for fun, you know. And if you want to like hang out, if you want to like support me, then like you know, go ahead. But you know, to have like a monthly, um, you know, to have like a monthly Patreon style support thing, like that just doesn't sit right with me. Cause like I tried that for a little bit. I tried to do like monthly rewards back when I was doing more like art and drawing. But I, I, I just couldn't keep up with it, and I was like, I don't want to do this because I have to. Like, I want to... I want to do this because I'm having fun doing it. You look more like Shrek than an orc. Enough people tell me that I look like human Shrek in real life, so I believe that. That was like... 
that was like the bane of my existence growing up. It's 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 the resemblance is less there now because I've lost a bit of weight. But growing up, I I had that on my Tinder profile, and people would laugh at me, um, and then not message me back. I don't need to do that anymore, though. Hair yeah, squid style and Eudora. God, if I could, if I could, I need a. I can't even. I can't even style my hair the way that it's supposed to be. I can't do it to resemble other things. <laughs> I mean, my Space Marine makeup inspired looks definitely did all right on like TikTok and Instagram and stuff. But at the end of the day, that was just like, hey, here's me with blue face paint on. Here's me with blue eyeshadow on. I feel like I need to step it up. I mean, I will say using the transfer sheets to put on my face as part of the makeup look, that was very smart and a good job on my end. But every time I've tried to do it since, the transfer sheets have broken and I'm very sad about that. There we go, there we go. That was called Ed Sheeran a lot. That's so cruel. Why would anyone do that to another human being? I think that violates the Geneva Convention, actually. You could probably get them tried for war crimes. Where's Ed... When's Ed, Sh Ed Sheeran getting, getting his... Uh... When's Ed Sheeran getting his own Warhammer reference? I mean, he's one of the three British musicians that exist. He is British, right? Necron and Spy Makeup look. Oh, yes. Oh, that would require me getting into Necrons, though, which I already want to do, because I've read two of the Necron books. And I very much enjoy them, because they're also silly, but in a different way. Okay, note to self, uh, Google how fucked up Conrad looks, because I, I don't have a, vi I don't have a visual reference, I don't have a visual point of reference for him. A lot of the Primarchs sort of exist in this weird amalgamous state to me. Like, I just sort of imagine Chad memes, unless I've seen them depicted before. And nine times out of ten, I'm right. Okay. <laughs> nah, cross, nah, cross. I mean, for me, like, I, I had a, I've, I've been having a great time reading the Necron books. I, I just finished Twice Dead King, uh, whatever the first one is. Ruin, I think. Um... And I finished, uh, what did you call it? The Infinite and the Divine a while ago. Um. <laughs> see, I like the Necrons. And I can definitely see myself getting a box. Or two. Or more. I mean, apparently they're, com apparently they're like, added value boxes aren't that good. Like, the Combat Patrol isn't a super good value for what you get. Which is a shame. I also got this like shard of the void dragon fucking unit that's just like a half naked metal guy. What's the deal with that? I love gay Robberman. Yeah, that's right. They're like Waldorf and Statler from the Muppets if they were robots who hated each other. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. I like the part where they went to the opera together and complained about it the whole time. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
I liked the part where Oricon decided to sit down and go to quiet, go to his quiet meditation mode, and and Trazen was like, "Hey, you know what would be really funny? Tyranid attack." And then for like three pages, it just gets mauled by a lizard. <laughs> That's fiction, baby. <laughs> I don't think it's another one too senile to remember. I think what's 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 the, what's the subgenre of fiction that I'm trying to think of? Uh, toxic old man yaoi is that the term? It's like a thing. <laughs> I love that line. The reviews were good. My, the moment I realized that like I was like a certified Warhammer fan was when I saw a Warhammer meme where someone depicted uh, Traz and the Infinite, like, breaking into that Imperial General's house before he, like, brainwashes him. And the Imperial General's like, Who are you? How did you get in here? And Trazin's response is, I'm Traz in the Infinite, and I'm Traz in the Infinite. Which is like that bit in, like, fucking Smoking Gun or Airplane or whatever. It's just, ah, so good. Toxic old man, yeah. Isn't that the term? Like, don't quote me on that. Like, that's a... I'm... I'm pulling from people more, far more smarter and well-versed in the genre than I am. You brought us front row seats to a coup. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm a locksmith, and I'm a locksmith. Yeah, like when I saw that meme, I was like, oh, I'm in this now. For me. Hey, you know what? I'm looking at this thing, and I'm realizing it's getting pretty brown. See, now my now my next job is going to be like, okay, what parts are going to be silver? What parts are going to be like yellow? I I I wanted there I wanted there to be like more surface area on the side of the jet because I wanted to like. I wanted to challenge myself and paint like one of those, you know, 1960s style like pinup girls on the side. Except it's a Gretchen. Saying like, give him hell, boys! Except the boys are spelled with a Z, because it's like boys, you know? I'm funny! Everybody laugh. Yes, the guy who reads the Necron books is so good. Robert Rath, I think. Oh no, he might be the he might be the um he might be the guy who wrote it actually. But yeah, the guy who reads the books is like really fucking good. Oh no, the full of, uh, that's one of the, that's one of the things like the uh, full of Katie gave him a bad voice. Damn, that's that's what that's that's one thing that like I, I'm sort of been interested in seeing as I like read more books and stuff like that is how characters are like dealt with across you know authors and writers and things like that. Because like I watched a uh, when they they did a thing a while back where some of the Warhammer Plus shows were free to watch and there was an animation with, like, some Chaos Space Marine Terminators, where, like, Trazen makes a cameo appearance at the very end. Um, and he wasn't silly at all. He was like, ooh, I have a real god complex, and I sound like fucking Dr. Robotnik. And I'm like, this isn't the gay, the gay little robot that I remember from the books. This guy's actually competent, and he's an asshole, but not in a fun way. Nate Crowley, that's it. What about the Ithaca City and the Secret Twice Dead King? Okay. 
Really? Alright. I mean, that makes sense. They're all, like, rusted over, how, rusted over robots and everything. Okay, let's see. I've been at this for more than two hours now. Um, I'm just gonna take a quick little break to re-up on coffee and water and everything. So I'm gonna step out for like a quick second. Uh, but I will be back to... You know, I might actually leave this dr to dry a little bit, and then I might see if I can paint some things like Lead Belcher or something. Because like, I think the base coat is pretty well there for a second. Uh, but I'm gonna take a quick break. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to leave. Who am I going to leave in charge? Uh... Okay, I'm going to leave... I'm, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave Pincushion in charge. Uh, you all have to do exactly as he says, uh, before I get back. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I have a good one too. I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be back real quick. Um, but yeah, in, in the meantime, Pincushion's in charge. Um, and I will return. God, I'm so full of piss. Oh, there's still coffee in here. That's great. I wanted to get a new coffee, but the one I had was still half full. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. What did I miss? <laughs> Alright. I was so happy to realize I had half a coffee in that mug. Okay. Let's see. Alright, let's, ins let's, in let's, in let's inspect. Let's, let's, let's see where we're at. I think I want to leave the brown, I think I want to leave the rusted brown to... Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to leave the brown to... 
dry a little bit. I'm seeing... It's, it's hard, and I, I know it's probably going to be hard to see on the camera and stuff, but I'm seeing a couple of wet bits that I probably don't want to I think I've done the cardinal sin of painting where, like, I don't give the paint enough time to dry, and then I just sort of go over it again and 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 again. But yeah, while I leave the brown stuff to dry, Brown stuff, of course, being the trendy new alternative to green stuff. I think I might get out my regular brush, which is definitely starting to flay in the shitty pencil case that I held it in. And I might see if I can start painting some of these pipes. But I know I'm probably just going to paint, paint, plaint? I'm going to plaint. I'm going to plaint the lead belcher. So I might just see if I can start putting in a couple of layers of that in there. Alright, where am I? Should I paint them lead belt? So I'm thinking about the pipes here now, and I'm thinking, should I paint them lead belcher, or should I paint them standard mechanicus gray, or something like that? You know, I think I'm, I think I might go for the standard mechanicus gray for now, and then maybe I'll see if I can give them like a like a shiny highlight or something. Because I feel like if I give the, I feel like if I just paint them all in lead belcher. Then, hmm, how does that look on, like, this gun? I mean, that's fine, but I might, I might go for something a little bit different, a little bit more, a little bit more technical. Am I going to paint checks on the wings? That's an excellent question. Now, how was it like in the box? Check marks are really hard to paint, though, and that's difficult, and I don't like doing things that are hard. I like it when everything is easy, all the time, and I don't have to think about things or change my behavior or anything like that. But I was thinking about, I was thinking about trimming the wings in yellow, because that's what I did with all of my other orc models. I just give them a really nice yellow trim. But I know... Did, did the dagger jet come with a transfer sheet? I can't remember. If there's a, if there's a, if there's a good transfer sheet that I can use, I might um, I might put some check marks on there. But if I have to do it by hand, I'm probably gonna find another way to do it. I am not strong enough, and I know that about myself. Actually, I could probably, I could probably, I probably have some leeway to do, um, I probably have some leeway to do, uh, transfer sheets on the Dakajet, actually. I don't think the Dakajet comes with transfer sheets or anything like that, but a lot of the orcs, the orc boys do. Which I think is weird, because there's not really any place on them you can put transfer sheets. Well, like, not anything is too obvious, because they're very- because the orc boys are very flesh-shaped. Use a square sponge dipped in white paint. God, that's so smart. That's way smarter than anything I could. See, for every problem, there's always somebody smart who's come up with a solution. Okay, there we go. Standard mechanic is great. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. There it is. Immediately, I didn't put it on screen. Oh well. Definitely got some brown on the orcs back there, but you know what? That's fine. And see, that's one of the beauties of the orcs to me. Like it does. Like you could. Like you can put in all those little flaws, and you can put in all those little imperfections, as Fulgrim would call it. And because it's the orcs, it just works. And I think that's beautiful, honestly. That's why I love the orcs. There's no wrong way to do them. There's no wrong answer, and I've already forgotten what the question is. I 
And that's why we love the orcs. Don't judge me if half of my if half of my bits and goofs are just recycled from my older videos. I'm a simple man. I can only think of so many goofs. I'm not particularly interested in more accurate orc paints anyway. Like, I, I get, I get... Oh god, my hair is fully in the way there. Like, I get, I get that the orcs have, like, their clans and everything. Like, space marines have their color schemes. But, like... I don't know, I just don't have the patience to paint an orc full yellow. I prefer rusty brown with yellow trim. <laughs> Can't believe my orcs are recognizing that. Yeah, that was that was that was wild. Like. <laughs> I sure I like uh, it was um. I mean the bomb hammer is like is like a pretty it's it's a pretty good design. Like I would. Like, that would be, that, like, from just my videos alone, that would, I understand why that was the takeaway. <laughs> Those videos also did pretty well, too, though, so, like, that's, that's definitely a part of it, too, I think. Like, I was very fortunate that those that those videos found an audience who seemed to be interested in my particular brand of chicanery. Ooh, I'm realizing there's a, there's a whole bunch of, like, space underneath this, like, exhaust port thing that just has not got any of the rusted brown paint. That's one of the things I really noticed about the orcs. There's a whole lot of like hidden little, hidden little corners and nooks and crannies and stuff. That's like, I I can never find them until it's too late. And it infuriates me every time. What also infuriates me is this paint is way too thick. Even though I'm pretty sure I watered it down. Hmm hmm hmm. We'll know when I stole the idea. Hey, look, they can have it. I mean, it's already made with pieces that they gave me to begin with. They just need to, like, give you little bits and pieces to play with. They should do that more often. They should, they should, they should give you, like, little... They should make, like, little bits packs. It's like, okay, here's just a bunch of bombs. Or, like, here's just a bunch of skulls. I mean, they do have the skull pack already that you can that you can just buy with just a whole bunch of skulls on it, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like you know, well, I guess I guess the joy of kit bashing is like using things that aren't supposed to be there. So I guess it wouldn't be the same if they gave you pieces for that explicit purpose. Would that still then be a kit bash? If Games Workshop made a kit bash set full of like bombs and pipes and swords and things that you could like glue onto other things? I guess that probably wouldn't be very tournament friendly though. I think there's a really, like, rough shade of grey. I'm not, I'm not sure what I've done here. I'm not sure if I've, like... Huh. This, this, this grey paint's coming out really weirdly, and I'm not, like... Sure. Hmm. A bomb hand would also work in a Krieg army. Oh, no. Poor Kriegs, man. They've been through a lot. They've been through so much, those poor bastards. 
All they want to do is die. I almost bought the, uh, Kriegsman Kill Team set. Like, no, like, you know, no lie. I've been eyeing off the, the Kill Team starter set at my local store. Because it's really cheap and comes with 10 Orc Commandos and 10, like, Guardsmen, Krieg boys, lads. And that's pretty good value. Also, like, terrain and the books you need to play and everything like that. It's a whole game in a box. And you can use the commandos in the in the regular game. Which will be great for when I eventually do that, because I haven't done that yet. <sighs> oh god. <laughs> Frustration and impatience with painting. Oh god, tell me about it. If it weren't for the fact that I was on a that I'm on a if it were for the fact that I'm on camera right now, I would be like screaming and crying and shitting myself half the time. Oh that color didn't work right. Fuck! Oh No You know, things like that. Regular Ethan noises. These pipes are these pipes are really hard to get in. I like particularly. I, I feel I feel like when I go back and do these pipes, I feel like I'm gonna have to go in and do these pipes like off off, off camera because like I'm gonna need to like pick them up, rotate them around, like do a do a full shebang here. Also, the grade doesn't really come up with um, the grade doesn't super come up on camera, so that's that's fun, I guess. Flip it around so you can get the light there. There we go. I eventually planned it and building you guys. Oh, hell yeah! I mean, the beauty of the game is that I think like, those armies are technically viable. Technically. Like, you can just bring all the boys you want to battle. Just have overwhelm- just overwhelm them with sheer numbers. such a way that it actually like comes down on camera. Is that the way I do it? No, that's what make things weird to look at. I need like a proper lighting setup in here. I need a proper stream setup in here. What am I talking about? I've got like a phone and a tripod and I'm hoping for the best. I'm playing music on my laptop speakers. This isn't professional by any means. But you know what? I work with this. Oh, the light's awful, actually. You try, you fail. <laughs> I try to, I try to plan out armies, but then realize I would never have the patience to paint hundreds of guardsmen. Yeah, yeah. Just buy what models you think are cool. Run four gazes at the same time. Run four Gazgulls as just one army. Who says you can't? The rules, actually. That you, you actually can't do that. <laughs> I mean, hey, one damage is one damage, right? You just need to keep whittling them down again and again and again and again and again. I mean, it would be great for objectives too, because you just like put like fucking 20 guys on there and you have an objective control of 20 guys worth. <laughs> that 
is the God's whole deal. 20 billion men and no more. starting to dry up now. Yeah, I really need to get in there with more color. Okay. Oh no, I put a little bit of gray where it wasn't supposed to be. The world has ended. Oh wow, what's happening there? Yeah, my quality might be getting crunchy actually. Okay. <laughs> we only lost 20,000 men today. Hey, that guy's getting a promotion. I'll tell you that much. Alright. Um, I, I think the rest of the details that I'm going to need to do for this, like the pipes and stuff, like I can make, I've, I've made a little bit of headway there, but I'm really going to need to like pick up the model and like twist it around and stuff like that to really get in there. So I think I'm going to keep letting the brown... Uh, dry for a little bit, because I, I think I want to do another coat there, but I want to make sure it's like 100% dry before I get into that. So, I think I'm going to probably call it there now. Ugh. And do some other stuff before end of day today. I should probably eat food, actually. That's the one big thing I haven't done today. Or this afternoon, at least. So anyway, I'm going to call it there for now. I've got most of the brown base colouring on this that I wanted to do. Uh, I'm slowly going to chip away at that over time, um, but yeah, this was, this, was, this was a good fun. I love, I love getting on and having a yap while I paint some guys and hanging out with everyone. So yeah, uh, I hope you all had a wonderful time. It was lovely to talk with you all, as always. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. I'm hungry, I need a sandwich. Alright. Take care, gang. Have a good night. Okay, now I have to now I have to awkwardly stand up and go to my phone, because this is like all done on a phone. And I have to like go up to my phone and actually like press all the buttons and like Wow, I can, I can zoom right on in there, can't I? Can I focus on him though? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, this phone sucks. It does the job though. <laughs>